Hi guys, welcome to Didi Dye's Crafty Corner. Today we're going to be working on this cute little stamp set from Darcy's Heart and Home called Best by Par. Now this set is going to be perfect for anybody in your family or any of your loved ones who play golf. It is super adorable and the faces on both the golf bag and the little fox are stinking cute, just stinking cute. I picked up my stamp set at the Not Too Shabby Shop. Thank you, Jamie, for always having the best stamps in stock. And you can save 10% by using Jamie as your code upon checkout. And you can also get some free, free you can get some points to get some free gifts along with your purchase as well. Okay, so I've started by doing a color chart for myself and the colors that I'm going to use, and let's get started. So for my little bag, I I like to color these images almost or as close to what I see on their stamped on their images, their color sheet that they send out with their stamps. So I'm going to be doing my little golf bag in browns and my little fox in orange and um, very light brown colors, if you will. Um, but they're not going to be exact, and that's because I have no idea what colors they used. So I'm just kind of making it resemble the colors that are in their bag. So my golf bag is going to end up being a little darker than theirs, and my fox will also be a little darker than theirs. But so, you know, that's okay. I just like to kind of mimic the colors. You don't always get it 100% is what I'm trying to say. But I love that they have those images there for us to follow. So on the little golf bag, I'm following where they have the light source, which is down the middle, and keeping my darker colors on the outside, that's gonna give this little golf bag a rounded appearance. And it's so stinking cute, guys. It's so cute. So the colors that I chose for the stitched areas of my golf bag are, I believe, it was, hmm. Let's see, I think it was E5759 and then 79, yeah, that's what it was. 79 for the very edges. So for my coloring, I like to do a flicking motion and I like to do my lightest color, medium, dark, and then medium, light, back to dark if I need it around the edges. And sometimes I will do that two or three times. It just depends how the blend is going and how far apart my colors are. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of the brown pieces, the dark brown pieces where there is trim, and then we will get started on the light pieces, which I'm calling the face. So for the face of the golf bag, or the light tan areas of the golf bag, those colors I'm using E21, E23, E25, and R21 for the little cheeks. Again, I'm gonna start off with the lightest color and then I think I'm gonna add my little cheek color and then I will go in with my medium, my dark, and then start all over again. Um, if there's not enough pink when I'm all done, I'll add a little bit more. Um, when you're using darker tan colors, it makes it harder to see that R20 or R21. But I think at the end, you could still tell that there was a little blush, and that's what I wanted for this male card, was just a little blush, not a lot. So I'm going over with my medium color, and then I'm gonna come in right now with my darkest color, and add those little darkest details around the edges, which are gonna make, again, this look like a rounded golf bag. Back to my medium and then I will come on and finish it up with the lightest color, blending it all together, and then we'll move on to the little golf clubs. Okay, so I finished up my little golf bag. I'm gonna come back to those golf clubs and do them off camera, I think, but there's a little close-up of what it looked like, and now we're gonna start on the fox. So for the fox's face, I used E51, E53, R21, and then I used a little bit of W3, which is a warm gray color, because if you notice on his little face on that image, his little hands are gray, but also around the edges of his little fox face are a little gray as well. So I was trying to mimic that little bit of a 
darker tone around the face instead of using browns I use browns and grays now I had a really hard time blending this face together with that gray on there so I did a little dot technique around his fur and that brought it all together and I think it turned out super cute so again I'm using my lightest colors I've used my E um, not E huh? I used my R21 for the little face did I use R21 or did I go to R20 for that? Let me look at my R21. Yeah, I used R21. So I used the R21 for his little face as well. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go in and blend darkest to middle to lightest and then keep it going in that same pattern. And then at the very end, I'll show you where I do a little stippling to bring it all together and then we'll color the little golf club and put this card together. Okay, so now I've, I'm coming in with my markers and I'm doing the little stippling or the little dot technique. I do this quite a bit on furry objects, furry, anything that has fur on it really, I love to do this, but I'll also do it on other things, florals, leaves, things of that nature as well. I just think it adds a lot of dimension and a lot of detail and it really helps to hide some blending mistakes. So I just come in and in this case I brought in a little bit of the orange color from the fox as well as all the brown colors that I used as well. So for his ears I'm using those same colors and then for his little hat um, I'm doing his little hat in um, G61, G63, E40, and E51. All right. I thought those were the colors that would match the hat that was in the actual photo. Um, so I'm just going to go in and do like every other square in a green and then every other square in a tan leaving a little bit of lighter green showing and making sure there's a little bit darker tan from here or there. Such a small image, your eye couldn't couldn't see it well enough to make a great dimensional um, look on that hat, but I think it turned out okay. For the little puff on the very top, I just used a little bit of the gray, one of the grays that I used in for his paws. And for his little paws, I used I think T O and T three T zero and T three. So I used that T zero for the top of his little puff on his hat as well. For the club, for the club on the fox, I used E thirty one, E seventeen, and E fifteen, and then the grays, as I said, were T O and T three. Um, for the clubs that were on the golf bag, as I just color here, I'll tell you what those are because I didn't film that. I don't know what happened, but there's no footage of me coloring those. I actually thought that they turned out really cute. I wanted to somewhat mimic the colors that were in the photo for the golf clubs. So the, what I chose for the golf bag clubs, for the browns, were E31, E17, and E15. And I thought it turned out so great. I love those browns in the clubs. So I did the colors, the shadowing, and the dimensional part of those clubs the same way that they did it in the photograph. So they did the darker on the bottom going lighter to the top. And I used the same light effect that they used on the gray clubs as well. So the golf bag, the clubs in the golf bag turned out super cute. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the finished images and then we're going to put the card together. And this is how they turned out. Super cute. So now to pull this card together, I've pulled some other items from my crafty stash and I'm going to be using some Simon Says Stamp um, stitched rectangles and squares. For the rectangles I'm using the fourth one in and the squares I'm using the third one in. And those are to make some little bases or some little um, boxes for my characters to fit in. So the the paper that I'm using is some wood grain cardstock. I believe I also got that from Simon Says Stamp. Um, I believe it was Tim Holtz was the brand of the wood grain cardstock. I'm also using a piece of vintage photo ranger um, 
cardstock that I picked up a long time ago and just that's just because I want to start using up some of those things that I'm not using all the time. The white fun the white um, tape foam is from Amazon. I get that two rolls at a time. I like it just fine. It's thinner than my scotch tape and um, I kind of like that when I'm using smaller images and the fun foam that I'm using to pop up the squares and the rectangles is a fun is just white fun foam that I also get from Amazon. So I'm going to be using these blender brushes um, to put just a little bit of ink onto my squares. I'm crazy about these brushes. I get those on Amazon as well. And um, they just put down the lightest amount of color. So I've already done one of the little squares. Also, these scissors, guys, I get asked all the time what scissors these are. These are the EK Success scissors. Um, I'm not sure where I can link to those, but if I can find them somewhere, I, I'll just put them in below for you guys. And of course, we're gonna be using my art glitter glue. You guys know that is my all-time favorite glue. It works perfectly for every project. I've never had a problem with it. And yeah, I just absolutely love it. So on this A2 top folding card, we're going to be adding the fun foam and these panels together. So I'm going to take the panel that I've already, uh, actually I'm going to take the brown piece of cardstock and I'm going to use my art glitter glue and I'm going to glue that. It's been cut just shy of my A2 card to leave me just a little bit of a white border. And I'm just going to glue that down to my base. And like I've said so many times, guys, if it's not 100%, don't worry about it. You want to do the best you can do, but, you know, getting it perfect every time isn't, it's not, it's not always going to happen. So just do it out of love and the people you give these cards to are going to love it because you made it. So don't stress over it, right? I used to throw so much stuff away because it wasn't 100% perfect. I don't do that anymore. I do the best that I can do and then I just go for it. So I've already added a little bit of the Vintage Photo Regular Distress Ink to the back of my first panel. And I'm going to be adding my fun foam to that. And then I'm going to add the glue to the back of the fun foam and I'm going to attach that to the top of my top folding card. Now, the second one we're going to do together and I'm using the... Oh, what was the color? Hold on. I forgot the color of that ink. So let's check and see what it was. Rusty Hinge is the color that I'm using for the second one. So I'm going to be placing the little golf bag right in the center of this panel. And see, it just gives it a little something extra. Just using that blender brush like that um, and putting a little bit of color behind it just makes it pop even more on that white background. So I love doing this little trick. So for the second one, I'm using Rusty Hinge and I'm doing the same thing. I'm just taking my color, adding it to the center of my panel, smoothing it out a little bit, and then we'll add our little fox right to the, right to the, right to the back of that as well. First, I'm going to add my fun foam in the same way, a little art glitter glue right to the back. Make sure it looks good, not showing through, and then more art glitter glue. And then we'll attach it to the bottom of our card, leaving a little bit of brown space to on either side, right? So you want a little brown showing in between your white square and your white rectangle. And um, you want a little brown showing on the bottom. And then you've got your white going around the whole thing. And that just makes this whole card just kind of flow together. So I'm going to make sure that we have, um, you know, that it's kind of even here. And then I'm going to take a little paper towel and any glue that I see. The art glitter glue is going to dry, perfectly dry. But I did add just a little too much glue to this project, I'm going to be honest. And I'm having to take a paper towel and just wipe up the glue because even though it dries clear I don't want there to be puddles of glue to the side of the card so I'm doing that and by doing that I've moved around my my little card a little bit so I'm just going to move it back into place and then take the tape off of our little fox and put that down as well and that's going to complete the front of this card super super adorable so I'm just going to set it down not press it down yet 
just kind of make sure it looks good and if I'm okay I press it down now for the inside of this card we're going to do a little stamping so let me grab what we need there and we'll get we'll stamp a little something on the inside all right, so I grabbed the sentiment from the stamp set. That reads, hope your day is a whole lot of fun. I've stamped it out with VersaFine ink and I'm gonna be placing it in, well, kind of the center of the card. It doesn't, for me, it's probably not exactly the center, but it's gonna look good. So it stamped out great first try again. That's the second time I've had great luck with that, but you never know. I'm gonna take that little piece of um, that little stamp. It kind of looks like little triangles or little, not triangles, little diamonds, right? And I'm going to use um, Vintage Photo Ink. I kind of looked at the two of them. I picked them up and looked at the two of them to see which one I would use. But I had, I'm gonna use the Distress Oxide inks for this one because the, the, the Distress Oxide inks actually do very, very well on um, these polymer stamps. They, it makes a great, you can stamp them down and it's just, it gives you great coverage. I absolutely love it. So I decided on the vintage photo. I thought it would match perfectly and I'm just gonna add a little color detail right there below our sentiment and it's gonna tie it in together. And then also we've used every stamp in the stamp set on this card, which is something I don't ever do. But I did for this one. Isn't that cute, guys? Turned out so stinking adorable. And that is this card. Isn't it so cute? I loved it. I, I think it turned out just spectacular. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some close-ups now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!